All right, guys, today we're going to kick it off Gangnam Style by talking about KA and KB. Other videos, we'll talk about pH and then polyprotic acids. So KA and KB, that's the equilibrium constant, like we've done everything else, KC, KEQ, uh, KP, KW even. All of those deal with this equilibrium where we look at the equilibrium system, products of reactants. Same general idea, except we're calling it KA because we're talking about acids here. So, for example, the first one that we're going to look at here is uh, ammonium reacting with water to produce hydronium and ammonia. And so for this one right here, we have aqueous. This is a liquid. Water is a liquid. So remember, we leave those out. And then aqueous, aqueous. So for this system, Ka is going to be equal to the concentration of H3O plus times the concentration of NH3 divided by the concentration of NH4 plus. No water because it's a liquid, pure liquid, so it's not put in there. And this is a Ka, an acid, because if we look at the system, it's producing H3O plus, so it's acidic. Here's something that may shock you. Strong acids also have a Ka value. So if you look at hydrochloric acid, which is a strong acid, its Ka is going to be equal to the concentration of H3O plus times the concentration of Cl minus divided by the concentration of HCl. The difference between a strong acid and a weak acid isn't that a weak acid has a Ka value that it sets up equilibrium. Even this system is going to set up equilibrium. The difference is it goes so far to the right, produces so many products, so this number up on top is so much higher that really this is so infinitesimally small that we don't even consider it. It doesn't make a difference at all. We can see that then here in this next slide. We look at some of the acid dissociation constants. So look right there at hydrochloric acid, the one on top, 10, uh, 2 times 10 to the 6th. That is 2 million to 1. So if we think of the last slide when we looked at the Ka for this reaction, that means the top half, this H plus Cl minus, is going to be 2 million times greater than HCl that's left in there. So why bother even talking about it? And uh, then we look down here at HCN, which is a weak acid, and we can see 4.9 times 10 to the negative 10th. That means that its equilibrium is going to lie really far to the left, really far towards the reactant side because of the small number, which means the number on bottom is larger. That's something we talked about back when we talked about equilibrium. Now we're just tying into acids and bases. And we could sing the same little ditty when we talk about Kb, the acid, or the base dissociation constants. So in this case, it's a base. Why is it a base, Mr. Jones? Well, because we produce those hydroxides, the OH minus. And so instead of an A, which stands for acid, we use a B, and we call it Kb. Other than that, it's the exact same song and dance. So Kb equals the concentration of the products times the concentration of the reactants. And once again, we leave off that water. Why? Because it's water. It's a liquid. We only consider aqueous and gases in equilibrium systems. And NH3 ammonia, that would be a weak base. And so we see that it, we write the equilibrium in there because it lies somewhere in the middle, or in this case, really far to the left. So there is a ratio of those two that we would consider. Here we can see a couple of the base dissociation constants. So these would be the KBs, sodium hydroxide, which we know is a strong base because it's part of those eight that we looked at, the B on the periodic table. Very large number. That means it lies so far over towards the right. It produces so much products that really we're not even going to consider any reactants left in the system. Ammonia, a little bit weaker or fairly weak base. And so we can see that it is a small number, so it's going to lie mostly over towards the left. You can see with all those. So the stronger the base, the larger the Kb. The stronger the acid, the larger the Ka. If you're given two uh, K values, whether it be for an acid or base, and you're asked to tell which one is a stronger base or which one's a weaker base, you just look at the magnitude of the values. That's Ka and Kb in a nutshell, so it's really very similar to Keq and all the other uh, K stuff that we've done. We're going to go a little bit more in depth into it later on how to use it to calculate pHs for weak acids since we can't use their uh, concentrations from the jug.